All right, this is the second part of the hamstring nerve problem. What we're going to get you working on is neural flossing. So flossing of the side nerve to improve neural mobility through the posterior chain back of the leg and just making sure you guys are doing it correctly. So what I like to get people doing to start with when they're not used to it and they're not sure of the problem and if they've got a bit of a back issue at the same time, if they've got a disc problem, that they're trying to get their nerve moving a little bit better, maybe they've got some entrapment, maybe they've got a bulge disc, that sort of thing, or simply the fact they've got it, an old tight back that on one side they've got a high lot of neural tension they need to get rid of so they can improve their deadlifts and hamstring stretching and all that sort of thing. So when you're doing hamstring flossing or neural flossing through the hamstring, what you want to work on is making sure that you get your knee and wind up those knee forward to wind up the posterior chain soft tissues, all right, so the muscular and all the soft tissues in through there. And then the first part of the hamstring flossing is working at the knee, the second part is the ankle. So if I'm going to try and floss my nerve here, I have tension off from here, and then I keep my foot dorsiflexed, you can see not plantar flexed, but dorsiflexed, and I want to straighten that leg and bring on that neural tension. I'll feel it from the back of the knee, through the hamstring, through the calf, maybe even the foot. Bring it on for a bit of a stretch, and then back off. It's not a sustained stretch. So you can't sit there and hammer that if you've got pain away down the back of your leg. You want to bring it on and off so you're mobilizing those that nerve through the soft tissues. And when I mean side nerve, I'm pretty, pretty general, it splits off with other nerves down your calf. So that whole neural system mobilizing it through there on and off 30 times in a set. All right, so that's your first one. Your second one, what you want to work on is holding the knee in one position and then dorsiflexing and plantar flexing the foot. So going to plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. So you're working this section down here a little bit more than this section here. So if you've got tightness through the back knee through the calf, that's what you're going to start mobilizing. So you can sit there and work on the calf by sort of pumping that ankle, dorsiflexing and plantar flexing the foot. That's a really good one to work on. Again, 30 times in a set or so. Now, that's your sort of initial part. That's what I'd start with as a beginner way. Once you've loosened it up a little bit, then you can add on some overpressure with the stretch band or a a distraction band and get that this time around your back. Now I like putting it around the back, it's, it's, it's a nice easy way to sort of lock it down and then you can still grab it. Um, if you don't have a band like this you can use a towel but it's just not as effective. So up into this position and here I can sort of really hold on here and add in a bit of overpressure. So the first point again what I'm going to try and do now is keep that, if I can come around here Really work on that, and now bring it in and straighten the neck. So I've got a bit of resistance now. And this is when you're a bit looser, or you don't have as much neural tension as before, you need a little bit of over pressure. Really work on that band. Using the quads there, okay, to straighten my knee, helps relax the antagonist of the hamstrings at the back, so I can actually get my leg straighter. So that's the first one. And then, once you're in here, then again, plantar fix, and then let that band pull you into dorsiflexion plantar flex, pull you in the dorsiflex to try and mobilize that lower leg neural system a little more. And the whole time just making sure you're in spinal neutral. Don't let that band pull you in extension. So if it's slipping up like this, get it back down on the pelvis. Make sure you're in neutral spine. You just don't forget about that. Don't let it imprint. Okay, so your lower back is in a neutral position, just in the position you'd like to be in when you're doing deadlifts. So keep that same position. So that's neural flossing part one, and uh, we'll go through the slump in part two.